And what a bitchy! Did a video, a good way to go now on how to make a homemade parking sensor receiver pickup tool for very cheap. And uh, since then, there was a few other YouTube channels come out with their version of it. But uh, in this video, we're going to move on from that. So you can make that wee tool very cheaply. So those wee ultrasonic receivers there are uh, for a couple of quid on uh, on eBay there. And they all work in around the 39 kilohertz, 40 kilohertz range. So that's where the parking sensors operate at. Now what it didn't say in that video, uh, the original video, was that you can buy that from Pico and it's not that expensive. It's uh, 20 quid plus VAT plus shipping there, and that's a TA329. Uh, it says it down the bottom right there. So that's okay. Now, but we've moved on then. That can only work at 40 kilohertz, and that's grand for parking sensors. And uh, if we look at ranges of uh, hearing ability, for various uh, various animals and all. We can see there anyway, the human, 31 hertz to 19 kilohertz. Now the 19, 20 kilohertz sort of upper range would be, you know, you very young people as you get older, you'll, you'll probably not uh, get up to that range there. But if we look right down to the bottom there, uh, the porpoise and the bottlenose dolphin, they're up their ability is up in the 150 kilohertz range. So that's that's uh, massive from the human there. Even a cat is 77. But anyway, what's the uh, significance of all that? Well, what we're interested in in this video is this boy here, keyless entry carrier signal detector. Now this is in the frequency range of 125 to 140 kilohertz and this is designed by Pico to pick up keyless entry uh, signals in, in the car. So you can get that from the door handle or inside the car where the car is looking for the key and uh, again it's 20 quid. So you can buy that on, there's it there, on Scamazon, £24 plus free delivery and there it is there on the flea bay, 24 quid. So pretty cheap, but it's a different tool to that parking sensor. And here we are, TA330 from the main men themselves, Pico in Cambridgeshire, 24 quid delivered to the door. And this is what you get. Are we high frequency pickup? And uh, yeah, you can tell it's a quality job there. So uh, well made, none of your junk from uh, overseas. So anywho, what is the point of this? You may ask, what is so special about this? Why did I seek this out? Well, because of this high f higher frequency range, then we'll have to our other wee oscillator, which is only 40 kilohertz. This is 125 to 140. Well, this can pick up signals of all sorts of descriptions, but this can pick up uh, magnetic changes, changes in magnetic field. Now, the majority of these wee ultrasonic sensors, they're, they're tuned to that specific frequency. Some, most of them, I think, are a, a, they are our favorite friend, the wee pizza in them. Some are capacitive, but nevertheless, it doesn't matter. You know, because this is set at a higher frequency, we can maybe dual purpose or multi-purpose this wee device. So I had a car in the other day with keyless entry, so we'll give it a try out. So I have one of these Datsuns in. 
with one of these keys uh, with no metal blade on it so it's a, a keyless ignition so uh, we'll see if we pick up can pick up the transmitter that's looking for this key with the, the key in the car with us so we'll just open the door and we are up and we get the handshake so I'm going to take the key away from the vehicle I'm going to put it down so I can't see it so we no key in the car we're not seeing anything so I'm going to wake the car up by opening the door the interior light comes on and it's looking it's looking it's looking for the signal there and uh, it'll keep doing that until the interior lights go off and the car goes to sleep as it were so we can find where the transmitter is as well by uh, waving it about the place we can see where it's the strongest we'll back it off and the signal disappears and the signal goes away when the interior light goes out so it's no longer looking for the key So there's a petrol engine with a uh, coil on plug and we'll just uh, see if we can see anything off the coil packs Yeah, there's number two and number three We'll see if we can see anything else We'll have a solenoid on the fuel pump here the high pressure pump and even though it's encased in metal I'm going to hold this on there and uh, I'll just show you what I'm getting on the scope. I'll just put a trigger on that to hold it, and uh, I'm just moving the, the pickup around just to see where the signal's greatest. Yeah, I think it's about there. The alternator is pretty accessible in this car, so I'm going to hold this wee pickup in at the back of the alternator where the diode pack is. And uh, I'm going to see if I can see an AC rubble. That's the AC coupling. And we'll just move it about on the back of the alternator. So we can see the, uh, the biggest signal there. So uh, we've got it there. So yeah. The only disadvantage with a snap-on is it uh, only goes down to 100 millivolts. So with this we pick up tool and some of the tests that you might use it for you need to go down a little lower than that so we'll do the same test with a wee pico on ac coupling and we'll just hold it on the back of our alternator and uh we'll stop that go back a frame let's see what that looks like so we'll get a lot more detail and we can scale this left hand side on the voltage so that's the advantage we're using the wee pico here with this type of wee tool here because we can really look at the magnitude of the voltage there's, there's millivolts uh, coming out of this thing you know so at the end of the day this is a, a sonic sensor it's not really creating the voltage but we're using it as a capacitive pickup. Here's another wee tool that I showed in the channel a while back. It is a magnetic field pickup neon indicator. Now this is not a phase tester. It picks up magnetic fields. So there's a wee magnet there. That's picking that up. So this is showing the duty cycle output of that pulse width modulator there. So we're going to energize this wee solenoid, but well, with a pulse width. So we'll see if this picks up. We'll see how far we'll have to go before this picks up. So clearly it's got a threshold. And there it's picked up 
at 87%. So it near enough has to be fully on. If I bring our wee Pico pickup into that, we can see it on the screen there. And with this hand, I'll, I'll wind that down. So you can see the duty cycle there anyway. So there's it more or less off. And we'll go right up. So what's it, what's this saying is the pulses there and it's cutting and a magnetic field. So whenever we go to near enough a hundred, we'll lose it. So there needs to be a change in the magnetic field for this thing to see what's happening. So if we bring this into your magnet, it doesn't see anything really, because it needs to be moving about. The magnetic field that is, so if we up our time base a wee bit, maybe we'll see something. This wee inductor here needs to have an alternating current for it to operate. So this one is operating at 50 times per second, 50 hertz. So there's 110,000 volts coming in and there's 33,000 volts coming out in this particular example. And the hum you can hear in the background is the 50 hertz hum. So for induction to occur, there needs to be a frequency or a change in the magnetic field. I can get a better signal on this wee saw now. It's, uh, it's plastic. It's, uh, it's uh, another fuel pressure solenoid, high pressure uh, fuel rail there, so uh, it's not metal enclosed plastic. So I have a, a wheel burn in the vice and uh, there's magnetic segments in there. So we want to see if we can pick them up. We have the 2204A set up for this one because we'll have to go really, really low on the voltage. And I'll show you how to do that. To set the wee Pico up for this type of test, so we'll bring the samples up. Uh, we'll go way up with it there. That's probably as much as uh, it'll go there. So we need to put it into streaming mode and that's 200 milliseconds per division or higher. If you have a 4425A, you could probably go lower than that. So let me see, our minimum voltage level there, our voltage range is plus or minus 50 millivolts. So we'll select that. And this wee blue box down at the bottom, this is what I was talking about with the scaling. So when I'm talking about the scaling, it's the, the voltage scale there. So uh, we'll click that wee blue box and we'll see the scale there at one. So we'll increase that by a factor of 10 and that will change this, the voltage scale on the side there. So we can see now it's plus or minus five millivolts. So one last thing we'll do then is we will change the bit resolution enhancement there and we'll up it to 12 bits on the 2204. On the 4425 you probably won't have to do that but those are just a, a few settings that we need to do to get the maximum out of this wee pickle. So I'm going to wing this around this magnetic ring. Now what we'll find is when we cut the magnets in there the faster I go, the faster I go, the higher the amplitude will be on this. And we've set the scaling way, way, way so we can see this. So there's, these are very, very weak magnets, but we'll see it. Now, we might see a couple of wee dropouts in it because I might miss, but if you were in the real world situation and you're able to get in a hole where the sensor goes, it's gonna hold that. Now, unfortunately, this thing is a bit bulky to make that sort of realistic in the real world. Uh, Pico's original design for this tool was more like a wand and it didn't have this green sort of shroud on it. 
So it's up to you if you want to use it for the test magnetic rings, you know, you could maybe take a knife to that, but that's entirely up to yourself. I think I missed that a good few times there, but uh, I missed the magnetic ring as I was winging it around there. So uh, that was to, to try and get a bit of amplitude. So there's probably places there where I missed. And the faster I went, the higher it's going to be, the more amplitude, you know. So in a real world situation, if you're able to hold that wee pickup till, you know, You'll see, you'll you'll see a capture. So there, there's places where I've sort of missed it, you know. I reckon. So uh, that's what we're seeing. So it's maybe a wee bit more consistent there. But yeah. So if you had a dodgy magnetic ring, then you're going to see a flat spot. Right? I'm not going to be able to represent it here in this demo. I was thinking about taking a, a knife to that magnetic ring and seeing if I can, uh, you know, replicate a missing segment. But uh, I'm just uh, not able to hold it consistently enough. There's a, there's a good wee bit there. We've managed to keep it on track. But I've, I've missed it a couple of times, and you did there when I did that. But uh, I think that uh, gets the point across that if you scale, if you if you scale this as times ten on this, and our magnitude there is, let's see if we can bring this down on the touch screen, the measurement. Oh, there we go. It's one point three millivolts there. So that's why I was saying earlier on that the snap on. Uh, it just doesn't go down far enough if you want to do these sort of subtle tests but we can't see it you know so yeah pretty good capture there on a wheel burn so there you go i think that about wraps it up i think we get the idea you know this will pick up a changing magnetic field so the magnetic field has to cut this or if it's a pulsed with signal with a frequency, something that goes on and off, this will pick it up, you know. And uh, if it's if it's very small magnitude, yes, then you need to you need to help that out. Uh, majority of the signals there, I was able to see in the snap on, you know, the vast majority of, especially for what it's designed for, you can see that on the snap on there, no problem. But uh, a wee bit more. And date we need to go a wee bit more detailed we need to just use our scope there and uh, with this wee 2204 we need to help it out by uh, having it in the the streaming mode anywho that's it a lot of uses i think there uh, again it's one of those ones where it's it's all about the creativity you know what else can you use this for what else what other type of sensors solenoids you know AMVs, whatever it is, can you can you actually see with this wee tool? You know, that's that's where the invention comes in, and yeah, for all the price of it, it's it's worth. Uh, I think it's worth having in the in the toolbox in the arsenal. So, yeah. Uh, in the near future, I, I might be. Uh, I might. I'm thinking about doing a video a wee bit more on the AC Ripple. There, uh, I've seen a couple of videos on YouTube and you know guys were having problems and you know they were discovering they were getting false readings from multimeters and stuff like that so i might expand on that but it's it'll not be by using we're using this tool here we can see that we can see ac ripple now that'll, that'll only work in some alternators some alternators if the the rectifier isn't isn't at the back of the alternator you know you're not going to see it so you know if you if you don't see uh, an AC coupling 
uh, AC Ripple by using this tool, you know, it may be because of the type of alternator. So I'm just putting a wee uh, disclaimer type thing there. But anyway, okay, as ever, thanks for watching. Hope you get something out of it. Maybe you did, and uh, I think it's a great wee tool there. So all the best, and...